What is up you guys? Today we're going to be making a Python tool to cross-reference different followers from an Instagram account. We're going to be using the Instagraphy, I don't, Instagraph API, Instagr, I don't actually know how you pronounce it. Um, but we're going to be using this wrapper to actually make all the requests so I don't have to um, go and do it manually. This is just a way to speed up the development process and it's just way easier to use it. I'm going to go through a quick overview of the different parts of the code and then I'm going to update you guys whenever I come back after I've coded for a little bit. So as you can see in our left hand side we have um, four main files. We have a readme which is just going to be on the github to actually show people how to work it, how to install it, what it is and how to use it etc. stuff like that. Um, the actual Python files, we have a helper file, which has nothing in it, of course, I've got to add to it. Um, we also have a toolkit file, again, haven't added anything to it. Um, but what these are going to do are just going to provide some extra resources that I'm going to need in a different file. The toolkit is more than likely going to have all the stuff I'm going to need to actually make the API calls with Instagraph API or Instagr uh, API. And the helpers file is just going to be a way to output and clean up the output and make it a very consistent bot. I actually already have a file for this, I just haven't put it in here. In just about all of my projects, I have this helpers file. Um, really what this does is just make all of the output look pretty, and that's really all I have to do with that. This is going to be all of our input and output functions. I doubt I'll actually be using debug, so I can just get rid of this entire debug class. And now we can call this uh, default class to get all of the inputs or outputs. These are just really simple one-liners that help. You could even copy if you want to implement into your own projects. All we're doing is using some um, one-liners, like I said, to input a string that's going to return a string. Um, well, here you can have um, different questions, but that's multi-option input. But we're using um, Colorama to actually color and style everything, and we're just using some very basic F strings to put all of this um, into a pretty consistent format. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and spend probably the night working on this, and I'll either update you later tonight or in the morning. But as of for now, I'm just gonna get some coding done, and I'll explain it whenever I come back. What's up guys, so it is the same night and I'm currently playing Seed, but I have got most of the code done that I want to get done for tonight. I honestly don't feel like explaining all of it here right now. Um, really, there's not a whole lot done, it's just the, um, really just the start of the program. These are all just some basic checks, banners, other stuff, just some simple stuff such as session stuff. Mainly all of this is actually session stuff and getting logged in. Um, and we here we have some exceptions too. Um, these exceptions are really just to give more verbose output and tell the user what exactly is wrong. Like I said, this is not a very complicated tool, although I want you know a basic simpleton to be able to use it. But like I said, there's not a whole lot done. We also have the toolkit here. Oh, I'm not actually supposed to show that. I'm gonna have to blur all of that. Here we really only have one function done, is and that is save to file. So whenever we're uh, saving that session information we can save it uh, using this function here. Here is what the actual program looks like. Like I said it doesn't have a lot of functionality. Right now I already have a session saved um, in my session.json folder or my session.json um, file so it's not going to ask me to actually input a password because I already have that session saved. Um, so there's this feature with the library that I'm using or the wrapper that I'm using where you can save your session and you can come back later to use it so you don't get API rate limited and I think that's very useful and I wanted to implement it into this tool. Here is what it would look like if I didn't have a session already saved. Of course it would still ask me so I can enter the username um, of the target and then I can enter the username that I actually um, want to use to log in to Instagram with. Um, once I enter that and my password, also I'm typing stuff in right now. I'm using a library called git pass. Um, it's a way to basically hide the password that you're inputting. There's no real use, I would assume, but it looks cool, and it's pretty neat, and it's it's cool, I guess. I don't know. It's just something I wanted to add. Um, of course, none of that's going to work because that's uh, not a real account nor a real password. Um, of course, I guess I don't have... I should have a check in for this, um, but I don't know. I got I to gotta stop playing Siege. That's really all I have for you tonight. Uh, pretty simple code and I really hope um, I can get a lot more work done tomorrow 
so I will update you guys tomorrow whenever I get a little bit more done. Good afternoon everyone, it is the next day and now I'm a lot farther along in this project. So it's looking absolutely beautiful, I'm super happy with it, it's got all the cool colors and whatever. I have now updated the um, GitHub repo to look a little bit cleaner and a little bit better. Um, it's all very organized, at least I would like to think so. Let's just go ahead and go over everything and talk about how um, it's working so far. So as you can see, we have some local imports from our utils file or folder. We'll um, talk a little bit about, more about that in a second. Um, we also have all of these non, well, I mean, they're technically local, but um, they're not my personal packages that I made. Starting down here, we have a OS check. I'm not exactly sure why that's not um, reachable, but I'll look into that more later. All this does is clear the screen so it's a little bit prettier so as you can see if we go and we run the script again it's going to clear everything out and then re uh, show the entire banner and everything really no real usage it just looks cool i guess here we're initializing all of the objects that we're going to need um, this is the toolkit class this is the input output functions class and this is the actual client class that we're using from the api wrapper here we print the banner. This is just sleeping 0.1 seconds before it prints every line. Again, that's just for effects, nothing special. And then we move on to actually checking our session. Now this may look confusing, it's really not. Let me break it down for you. As you guys can see, we first off start by getting the target username that we wanna get information on, and then we move on to actually getting the settings dictionary so we can compare it to these curly brackets. The reason we compare it to these curly brackets is because if it returns curly brackets, then that means there's no saved setting. If there's no saved settings, then we need to go ahead and have the user input those credentials so we can log in and then we print success. If it does happen to return anything, then there's more than likely either an error or the saved session that we need. So we just go ahead and set the settings to that session and then print success. Now this code block here is just after you actually put in all of your credentials and everything like that and it actually logs in. It asks you if you want to save those settings, you have the option of yes or no. Really, it's just to automate the process of logging in again, and it's less API calls. So personally, I recommend it, although it could be technically a security risk if um, you were to release these sessions.json files, but I doubt it would be really important. Overall, that's just the basics of the authentication. Obviously, nothing too crazy because we're using a wrapper. Um, this is just automating the process and um, making it a lot cleaner. And then after that, we just go ahead and start that main function with a bunch of different exceptions here in case anything happens. Going back up to this main function right here, we have a few things that are happening here. This is kind of where I've left off for today. I may work on it a little bit more throughout the day, but um, really this is where most of the code is going to be stopped at. Here is where most of the actual code is going to be taking place, where all the functionality is going to take place. Most of that was just setup and configuration. Now we're gonna go ahead and start gathering info and comparing things. Here we start extracting all the data that we're gonna need, such as followers, following, and all the posts and the post likers. Here we also have these time.sleep calls. What these are doing is just a little bit more obfuscation for the API servers to think that we're a real human. This isn't 100% necessary, although it will help if you're making a whole fuck ton of calls. This here is actually just for debugging. That's not gonna be in the original code, but it doesn't really matter. Um, moving on to over here, all of these are, these aren't even fun, finished functions. What they are going to do are they are going to be the actual ones that cross-reference everything and get all the data that we're going to need. So, so far, we are pretty much done with most of it. I mean, we really just have to actually add in all the math and get all that done. Um, and then, of course, get the rating and everything. And then a little bug improvements here and there. But basically, this is it. Currently, yes, there is no real functionality to it. All it does is get normal information, but here's what it looks like actually running. As you can see, I already have a session saved. It gets all of my information, and then if we wait a little bit more, it should get some more information. Oh, no, it looks like we have um, some kind of rate limit. I don't know why I thought that would work again, but this is what it looks like working. You know, what's actually funny is I thought this was a pre-written um, string, but this is actually the exception that I added in. So this is the um, output from the actual uh, wrapper saying, hey, you need to wait a minute. So this really means that I have been rate limited, which is really neat that it actually worked. And this is my first time actually seeing that. So I'm super happy. I'm glad it looks really clean and it works. I do have to wait because I just got rate limited, though. 
What's up you guys, as you can tell, it's been a while since I have last updated you guys, mainly because we've been running into a lot of different issues with the code. We've been running into a lot of different rate limiting issues that, I mean, I could fix using, you know, maybe some kind of residential proxy or something of that sort. Although I don't want to go out and buy my own residential proxies and most VPNs are blocked by um, Instagram and Facebook. Except for a few here and there, I have had a few um, with Virginia servers and stuff like that work, but overall I've just been having issues with it. I do plan to keep working on it and um, I am going to have to make a part 2 because this video is dragging on and it's becoming a pain in the ass to edit because I'm currently editing it. But yes, we are going to have to move over into a part 2. I didn't want to, I wanted to make it all in one video, but running into some issues. Let's go ahead and go over the code that I have now, talk about it, and um, see what I've already implemented and what could be changed. So of course here in the main function, which is called right after um, all of these checks are done, I've added proxy support and I've actually added um, this little check for um, if there is a saved account. So if there's a saved account and you pass in tag A, it's just gonna print the username that you already have saved in the session.json file. That's really just to tell you what account you already have, or you could just go into the session.json file and look at the username. This is just more user friendly, I guess. Down here in the main function, most of it's basically the same. We have added um, the cross reference accounts that actually works and cross reference post selectors actually works. I don't believe I actually showed any of the code in the previous videos that I've recorded, so let's go over um, how all of that works. And it's pretty simple, nothing too complicated. I'm pretty sure. Most um, junior developers or even a simpleton could understand how this code works, but let's just go over it real quick. So as you can see, we're getting our user followers in a GQL chunk. The reason we're doing that is for rate limit issues. Um, it just helps a lot with, um, with rate limiting and we don't have to use the mobile API. Here you can see that I've been doing some debugging on this. This is where the rate limiting is really coming into play. So I've just got to keep working on it and see what's going on. but. Um, whenever we move down here, you can see we're parsing through all of those usernames, um, checking all of them, seeing if they are mutuals or not, and if they are, save them, and then we just return that. This is just the output right here. This is this just kind of updates it in real time. It's really just for looks. All of it, super simple, super easy to understand, nothing too complicated. Same thing with the cross-referencing post likers. This is less of a um, major thing that we're going to need need. Although it is something that I would like to add, and so it's here now. We check if there are any user medias. If there aren't, then we just return none. Here we check for all of the user tags on uh, any of the posts. If there are any user tags, we save them and we log them. And the same thing is basically down here. All we're doing is checking for all of the post likers and seeing any if, if any of them are mutuals. If it is, if that person is a mutual, then we just store that and then we save it for later and then we increment this mutual likers count that we also pass into the return. All of this is eventually going to be used in the code at the end to give it a rating on how real the account is. Um, and then we down here, we just have uh, the parsing of all of the extra data that we want to, such as the bios and everything. Um, this really isn't done. I'm not even sure if it works. I haven't had time to test it or play with it. So, I mean, all this is using is Spacey to um, do natural language processing and find countries, abbreviations, schools, and ages and stuff. So, I mean, I hope it'll work. <laughs> I haven't, I've, I've never worked with Spacey, so it's going to be definitely kind of a learning curve. If you have any suggestions on how I could fix this or what I could possibly do, please let me know in the comments. I'm completely open to it. Or even if you can open a push um, request and I will probably... Put, I'll probably push your code. Overall, most of the code is basically the same, just minor bugs and fixes here. Like I said, there's gonna be a part two to this where I actually finish the tool, so um, really I guess that's the only thing that's left to do. If you guys enjoyed this project and you guys wanna help out um, and support me on these videos, you can join my Discord, you can support me by going and buying my merch. There's plenty of things you could do, um, although this is really, I'm really upset that I couldn't get this done within a week. I don't know why it's being so weird. But like I said, if you have any suggestions on what I could change or fix or add, um, let me know in the comments. I'm totally up for any suggestions. But as of for now, I will see you guys in part two whenever that comes out.